So now we, we, we live life reckless and we expect God to deliver us from foolishness. We expect that from God. So, 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 so he living, he's living reckless. Manipulate God, testing God, asking God to prove himself. It's foolishness. So you have the right to choose your actions. You have that right, but you have no right to choose your consequences. You can choose your actions all, all you want, but you cannot choose your consequences. The consequences are automatically built in to the decision that you make. You can choose to have sex all you want, but you cannot choose the consequences if you get infected with an HIV or something like that. You don't have that right to choose that, but you can choose your actions, but not your consequences. Now, now the torment of the temptation of sin has no comparison to the torment of the consequences of sin. The torment of the temptation of to sin has no comparison to the torment of the consequences of sin. Dr. Ben Carson, he, he expressed that the person that has the most to do with you and what happens to you in life is you. Then he goes on to say, he said, you make decisions and you decide how much energy you want to put behind that decision. The things that happen to you in life have so much to do with you that you were not even realizing or recognizing that it had a lot to do with you. The decisions that you make. So then you live life saying, well, if it's my time to go, then it's just my time to go. So we live like reckless. You purposely put in yourself in harm's way. On purpose. So Satan comes and then he says, Throw yourself down. Throw yourself down. You know the angels. Go ahead and name drop. Go ahead and flex. Go ahead and show up. Go ahead and prove who you know. Try to get God to do something unnecessarily. You try to get God to perform magic. You want God to perform all these tricks unnecessarily. Throw yourself down. Go ahead and jump out. Go ahead and do it. Just do it. God got you. Reckless. Just reckless. Not even thinking about the decisions that we're making and the energy that we are putting behind those decisions. The people of God or, or Christians or humans, they, they take the role of Satan by trying to manipulate God. Well, God, if I pray two days this week, two consecutive days, I expect you to give me the money that we talk about. Well, God, if I read my Bible this week, then I'm going to be looking for you to do something for me next week. We're trying to manipulate God. Amen. And sometimes you get bold. And you go on out there and you, you, you spend the money. Spend the money that you don't have while simultaneously saying, the Lord will provide. <laughs> That's the manipulation. So now you're, you're trying to get God to do something based off your actions. So now you've got all these deals going on with God that God is not even aware of. So now the relationship with God is based on negotiations. You negotiate with God. And the relationship has become tainted because we're trying to manipulate God. And manipulate I want, I want to close with this because my time is gone. But Satan was looking to get three things. He was seeking to disqualify Jesus as the Messiah. Had Christ put God to the test, he would have saved him. That would have been the bottom line. He would have been over with. That's the first thing he was seeking. Satan was seeking to put doubt and unbelief into the mind of Christ. He does us the same way. He tried to put doubt and unbelief in our hearts. So he tried to get us to jump out there and do stuff. 
by putting doubt and unbelief because had Jesus jumped, he would have proven that I don't trust you, God. I don't trust that you'll provide for me and I don't trust that you'll come through. That's what he would have proved. The third thing he was seeking, he was seeking to tempt Christ to try to manipulate God unnecessarily, trying to get God to do something. So in order to save the world, Jesus had to succeed where Adam and Israel both failed. So the Spirit had to lead, had to lead Jesus into the temptation experience for 40 days and 40 nights to connect back with Israel who had failed for 40 years. He had to connect back to that. There's an enemy seeking to get you to fall to the temptation to quit and to fall to the temptation of lust. He wants you to give in. He wants you to give up on God. That's the temptation. He's tempting you to manipulate God, to ask God to do something that's not even in His will. But you have the expectation for God to do it simply because all you ever knew was how to manipulate. And it wasn't even your fault. But that's all you seem to know how to do. And you carry that into a holy relationship with God. God, do this for me. And I'll do that for you. God, if you do so and so, then I'll know that you love me. But you have to dig into your reservoir the same way Jesus did and say that it is written. For God so loved the world that he gave. So you have to know that God loves me. It doesn't matter how you try to make me feel. I don't live by my feelings. I live by the word of God. I live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God because it is written. And so, 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 so we're in this battle and, and we have to understand that God is on our side. God is pulling for you. God is rooting for you. God is saying, hey, that son. Hey, that daughter. Hey, that I know that you can do this. I've equipped you for this. I built you for this. I made you for a moment. Just like this. Dear Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done in our lives. For equipping us. Thank you for your knowledge. Thank you for the knowledge of your word. Help us to know your word so that we may know how to use your word accordingly and properly, oh God. I pray, oh God, that we get back in right relationship with you, oh God. Let us drop all the manipulation methods and all the habits of trying to trick you into doing something for us, God. But help us to love you for who you are in our lives, oh God. And we just thank you for being faithful even when we wasn't. We thank you for extending your grace even when we didn't deserve it. Lord, thank you for your mercy. So Lord, today we just want to say that we honor you and that we love you and that we worship you with all of our being, all of our soul.